Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for being with me today. You know, there's many different kinds of press conferences that we do from this podium. But the one that I'm going to talk about today is one of the most horrible, tragic deaths that we've seen in a very long time. And it was all because of negligence and drug use. Did you hear what I said? Once again, I want to make it perfectly clear there are those that still think drugs are low level and nonviolent. I suggest to you today that when you hear what I have to tell you, you'll think anything other than that because certainly they created the atmosphere for what occurred. And it all started with a party on July the 4th. And here's what happened. Joel Rondon and his wife, Jasmine, went to a party. They were accompanied at that party by many friends, and there were children there as well. They took a six-year-old, uh, eight-year-old, and an 18-month-old baby to the party. And the party went on through the evening of July the 4th, and about 2 o'clock in the morning on July the 5th, in the middle of the night, they left this party in downtown Lakeland at some people's homes to return to their house in North Lakeland. When they arrived at the house, Jasmine took the six-year-old and the eight-year-old into the house, said, I'm going to give them something to eat and put them to bed. And Jasmine told Joel, bring the baby into the house. Joel then was taking some food stuff, some trays of food into the house. Jasmine went in to feed a six and an eight year old child and she put them to bed and subsequently she went to bed. Joel, when he was taking the food trays into the house, noticed the right rear door open. When he finished taking the food trays into the house, he noticed the door was closed. So now he thought that Jasmine must have gotten the child. So he went in, Jasmine was in bed asleep. He went to bed asleep about three o'clock in the morning. Now listen to my timeline here. It's three o'clock in the morning. Joel wakes up at 10 o'clock and is preparing to get ready to go to work. About an hour later at 11 o'clock, he looks at the eight-year-old and says, where is the baby, this 18-month-old little girl? Jasmine's still in bed asleep. The eight-year-old looks around and says, I don't know where she is, where she normally slept in the bed or in the room with the eight-year-old. So Joel starts to look throughout the house and he doesn't see the baby. He goes to the car and there is the baby still strapped in the child carrier in the car with a heat index 105 degrees on that day. He grabbed the child carrier and the infant from the car, runs inside screaming for Jasmine Jasmine, who it's reported has some medical training, looks at the baby and says, I know the baby is deceased, is dead. Despite that, they grab the baby out of the car seat. They rush to Lakeland Regional Medical Center. And upon arrival there, even though it's painfully evident that this child has suffered a torturous death, a absolute torturous death, Lakeland Regional still worked on the baby to try to save its life, but it in fact was deceased. What's interesting about this is that the investigation begins as you can imagine that it should, and here's what we discovered. Jasmine and Joel are given a quick test 17 hours after arriving home, 17 hours after arriving home from the party, 
Jasmine test positive for alcohol and marijuana. Joel tests positive for alcohol, marijuana, and methamphetamine 17 hours later. So you can imagine what kind of shape that they were in when they arrived from this party and left this child harnessed in the baby seat in the back of the car. This child's 18 months old. She's not old enough to let herself out of the harness, but she's certainly old enough to realize that she is suffering a torturous death at the negligence of Joel and Jasmine. The investigation goes on. We determine that Joel has a criminal history. He was arrested two times at 15 and 18 years of age concerning a shooting event. At that time in his life, he was doc documented as a gang member. He also has currently pending against him charges of methamphetamine and carrying a concealed firearm. Those charges are pending at this time. He also has a history of resisting arrest. And now our detectives this afternoon are adding the criminal charge of aggravated manslaughter of a child, which is a first degree felony. Jasmine doesn't have a criminal history, but she does now. She's been charged with aggravated manslaughter of a child. Now, interestingly enough, when the investigation began by our detectives, after the hospital tried life-saving maneuvers, which includes cooling the baby down, when we started our investigation at like 2.30, 3 o'clock in the afternoon, after the life-saving measures, after the body being cooled down, the baby still had a core temperature of 104.4 degrees. And this was like three hours after the baby was taken out of the hot car. Three hours after the baby was taken out of the hot car and the hospital tried to cool the baby down. This rips your heart out. There's no other way to explain it. We all have or had children or grandchildren, or both obviously, or nieces or nephews that have been 18 months old and we know how vibrant they are, how active they are, but how fragile they are. And this child from three o'clock in the morning until she was discovered was harnessed and could not get away from this. The investigation's ongoing. The child otherwise was healthy in that it was not deprived of food. The other children are not deprived of food. This is not an accident. This is pure negligence. And I suggest to you the core of the negligence is the abuse of drugs and the use of drugs. And who suffered? Who died? The 18-month-old baby. So don't ever tell me that these drugs are low-level and nonviolent because they're at the core of why this child is dead today. Are there any questions? Sure. Can you tell us just any sense of remorse that those parents have? I mean, no matter how much you convict them, they're going to convict themselves. Of well, they, they are remorseful that the child's dead. And the investigation goes on at this time. But I think the real remorse will be tonight when they're sitting in the county jail in an air-conditioned environment by themselves, thinking it's nice and cool here when my baby baked to death because of my negligence and my use of drugs. 
and they are they will and have to be held accountable for such horrible conduct. Any sense of, oh, I'm sorry. Um, any sense of knowing that it was three o'clock in the morning, so there was some time when the baby was just in the in there and was okay. Any sense of what? Temperature, how long the baby suffered in that time when the temperatures really got to that point? Where certainly, the certainly the overnight temperatures are in the 70s, high 70s. And by sunrise and a little after, you're into the 80s, and then it jumps up into the 85 and 90 by 10 or 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock. The heat index we estimate to be at 105, so it was probably 94, 95 degrees. The car was outside, not in a garage, not under a tree, not under any shade at all. And obviously, we will try to recreate with the same temperatures the heat of the car. Research shows us that the temperature of the car could have been anywhere between 130 and 170 degrees at that time. And Sheriff, you know, we've been only talking about this record heat right now. Can you just talk about how dangerous it is and just a warning for other parents right now to make sure that this doesn't happen again in our community? Well, absolutely. The, there has been record heat here. In fact, something that I don't normally do, I sent out all mails to my deputies who wear vests, bulletproof vests, to say, hey, you have to start hydrated and you have to stay hydrated all day long. When it's 100, or 95, 96 degrees, the heat index is 105, 106, as we know that you all have reported. It is brutally hot for everyone under the best of circumstances. And then this child is shut in the car, obviously with no movement of air, with it becoming hotter and hotter and hotter as the morning went on. And you just can I mean there aren't words to explain this and and Jasmine still still in bed asleep she still in bed asleep has no idea that her baby is in the shape it's in where, where are the other two children at the moment? The other children are with other relatives. DCF obviously has been notified and is doing a parallel investigation. They responded immediately. DCF works really, really close and really, really well with us, and their response was immediate. Can you tell us where that North Lakeland home is? I, I don't have that information with me, but our folks can, can get you to the area of that. Okay. Question with Joel being you mentioned his age. Do you know his current age? Current Joel is 33, and so is Jasmine. Joel works for a subcontractor, loads and unloads trucks. And with Jasmine, can you speak to the medical training? She said she had some medical training. We don't n know anything past that at this stage of the investigation. We worked with them yesterday throughout the evening mid-afternoon and evening hours and then this morning we started the investigation so we're still relatively new and in, in, into this investigation and when you bring these kinds of charges there's certain processes that you have to go through and we've obviously worked with our state attorney's office I've told you before Brian Haas is simply the best state attorney in the world and uh, his office has worked very closely with us and they're equally concerned as to the negligent treatment of this child. Uh, the takeaway from the sheriff when people dealing with transporting children or animals, pets in their cars this time of year? Well, cl clearly that the new cars even have devices that tells you check the back seat. You, If you don't have such a device, then you need to create your own device in the front seat. And it starts with the not being stoned on drugs. You don't think clearly when you're stoned on drugs. They had been drinking and using marijuana, I'm sure, throughout the evening. He had meth in the system. I, I mean, it's, it's, that's just a train wreck. But that's a disaster waiting to happen. And here's one more person who's dead, a baby, a 
baby who can't help itself because of the abuse of drugs, which obviously created the the mindset or environment that they that they were in when they got home late in the evening after a long party. It's been a rough week for the kids and everything. Oh, well, it has. It's 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 been it's it has been a, a terrible week. You know the most precious things we have in our life are our children. And you think about it, children have no decision making process to decide who they're born to, where they live, what they're fed, how they're clothed, how they're taken care of, they're totally 100% dependent upon their family or their caregivers or the person in charge of them, 100%. To me, that makes them that much more precious because their entire life is possible because of us caring for the children appropriately. Well, when you mix alcohol and methamphetamine and marijuana, your faculties to think appropriately are significantly damaged. And that mixture of alcohol and that failure to communicate and make sure that baby, I mean, they got the food in the house, but they didn't get the baby in the house. Uh, was their BAC level at a, at a point where it was legally drunk or what, what was it? It was 17 hours later though. What, what they call this is first is a quick check and it's seven, this was 17 hours after. Now we preserved also blood that we'll send to the lab and do some more forensic workup, but it just, you know, it just really upsets me that this child should have grown and flourished and grown into a productive teenager and adult, and now she won't have the opportunity to do that. Is there any way for law enforcement to determine their levels at the time the incident happened? Is that, that just something that you're just... No, you won't be able to, but the fact that, that, that it is in, actively in their system, and they admitted to us, by the way, that they drank alcohol and smoked marijuana. You know that drug that people want to legalize because it's not bad after all. I think we've shown where the abuse of alcohol and marijuana and add in meth for Joel is dangerous. It's deadly. It didn't have to be this way. Anything else? Thank you very much. Have a good day.